Welcome to Train Signal. You are watching Next Steps. So that's it. You've gone through the entire UCS course. Well, hopefully you have. And now you've added UCS to your list of infrastructure proficiencies. So good job. But now what do you do? Well, it kind of depends on where you are, what you're interested in, and what you want to do with your career, or just generally what you want to learn. And there's a few things that I think kind of fit in along with UCS. And the first one is virtualization. So if you are light in the VMware knowledge or Hyper-V or Zen Server or KVM, that's a great place to kind of build up some skills. Those are highly sought after skills. If you're looking at deploying UCS, as I've said several times in the course, almost all the UCS deployments that I see are running VMware or some sort of virtualization. So they go very, very well together. Along with virtualization, we see other kind of technologies, storage being one. When most people deploy VMware, or again others, they deploy also centralized storage if they didn't already have it. That's a requirement for a lot of the cool cluster features like vMotion that many people want to take advantage of. So again, it's that combination of skills that make people very desirable in the market. Networking is another area. Networking's always been popular. It's always been sought after. Good network people are always hard to find. But that's even more the case in the data center. 10 gig, 40 gig, coming 100 gig, fabric path, OTV-like technologies, overlay transport virtualization from Cisco, Nexus switches, fiber channel over Ethernet. These are new technologies that are being deployed in data centers right now. And as someone who you know works for a partner that does these deployments, we can never find enough good people. So I... I encourage you to go pick up those skill sets for both your benefit and mine. And finally, application deployment. This one just rides on top of everything else. It's becoming a necessity for a good server administrator or you know data center architect to be able to talk in depth about applications and how they interrelate and how they work with the infrastructure and disaster recovery and high availability and how you can get those applications to the end users. So it's not just about the gear anymore. It's about how you use that to support applications that drive the business. You put all that together, and then you're a very well-rounded data center engineer or data center architect. What about other Cisco technology? So we talked a lot about this in the virtualized data center discussion way back at the beginning of the course. But there are things that combine well with UCS, and we've hit on these throughout the course as we talked about different lessons, like Nexus switching. You know, Nexus switches aren't just boring 10 gig switches or 40 gig switches that are coming. They have other really great technologies like overlay transport virtualization or LISP or, you know, virtual port channels and they support fabric path and they're very deep and these technologies are here to help you deliver better values and better services to the business and to the customer. So we see a lot of these deployed and we're seeing more and more, especially as things become like high availability and active active data centers, these layered technologies become very important. MDS for fiber channel storage from Cisco is another one. All overall virtualization of the network of storage and other storage technology. So storage is one of those things that seems very stagnant, but it's not. Now with some of the integrations with virtualization, and you know, expanding data centers, we're seeing things such as EMC's VPlex, which is a storage technology. And what it does is it allows me to have two data centers or two sites. I have storage arrays in both sites, and I'm accessing the same data sets on both sides. So for a VMware guy like me, I can now stretch a VMware cluster across two sites and vMotion a VM from one site to another. We call it teleportation just for a cool name, but we haven't been able to do that really very well because you know if storage is at site A and I'm vMotioning a VM to site B and it's got to come back across the switch fabric to A and eh, that's not very good but now I can move it to site B and it'll pick its storage up over at site B and start running local really really advanced technologies that are being deployed today and being used by companies so those are great areas for improvement and then you know, if you haven't picked up on it, there's a huge need for converged skill sets. We see this, my customers, when they come to us asking about hiring people to manage the systems that we've deployed, are saying the same thing. These people are hard to find, and everyone is looking for people with a good combination of skill sets. And I'm not just saying that because, 
you know, I'm sitting here talking to you on a train signal course and I'll talk to you about other courses that are available. I mean it as someone who works for a partner and, you know, we're a fast growing partner. And the biggest hindrance to our growth is not customer demand, it's not technology, it's finding quality people with a combination of skills. We normally don't go after someone who just does servers or just does storage or just does networking. We like to have at least two, preferably three areas that they can work in because when we do deployments or even if you're you know, being hired by an organization and they're doing a data center refresh, you need to understand those different areas and not just one is going to get you through it. You need to know how the servers connect to storage and connect to networking and how those interrelate and how we put VMware on top of it. So this combination of skills for deployment management and troubleshooting are pretty much a requirement these days. But it's really hard to find people. So if you have that skill set, you're in such high demand that you know you can go and do about anything you want to do and really just continue on and grow in your career. So some next steps and some things to kind of help you out. Uh, first, I, I've mentioned this in the troubleshooting section or lesson. It's the Cisco Data Center blog. And everything that we kind of talk about here, UCS, Nexus, 1000V, vSphere integrations, storage, even security things like ASA, is normally talked about on Cisco's data center blog. So that's a one-stop shop for everything Cisco data center. Really good reading. I know several guys that, that are published articles up there, and it's very informative. Another great resource is Twitter. And I think I hit on this again in the troubleshooting lesson, but uh, I use Twitter all the time. And it's not just for talking to my buddies or what we're doing today, but I get a lot of good information. I've made a lot of great contacts. And when I have a question, I can usually throw it out into the Twitterverse and get an answer back faster than any other way. The way that I do this, and if, if you're not familiar with Twitter, or you're just kind of like, you know, I looked at it, but I, I didn't really get it. You know, it's, I, I followed a couple of movie stars or sports, you know, or a couple of athletes or NFL players. And, you know, it was like, okay, well, you're missing a lot of good use of Twitter. So again, my blog, jasonnash.com, I put an article up that says, you know, how I use Twitter. And it talks about how I set up TweetDeck, which is a client I use, how I set up automated searches, what I use hashtags for, those sorts of things. So I've got some suggested hashtags here. And basically, if I'm going to ask a question or I'm talking about a new feature, let's say it's on UCS, I'll say, hey, has anyone tried out this new feature in UCSM 2.0? And I'll put hashtag Cisco UCS. And then other people in the community will constantly run searches and things against hashtag Cisco UCS. So they'll see that and we'll start having a conversation. If you go out and say, I'm deploying the Nexus 1000V and you do like pound 1000V for the hashtag, but I'm running into this error, don't be surprised if I answer you back since I do a lot of work with the 1KV. It's just a great way to kind of form a community and get information and help people out and just learn new things. In fact, I no longer do an RSS reader. There's just too much content that's being published to keep track of. Basically, I trust my friends or the people I follow on Twitter enough that when a good blog post comes out or a good article somewhere, usually they'll mention it and I kind of use them as a filter. It just makes me more efficient. Also, great content at conferences. So I went to Cisco Live uh, several years ago but when UCS was just hitting and things like Nexus were just being released and it was a lot of your traditional route switch networking stuff. Now, these days, when I was there last year, or actually this year, it's a lot of data center, a lot of UCS, a lot of Nexus, a lot of 1000V, a lot of integrations with storage and VMware. I've mentioned in a few places, you know, Sean McGee, who I mentioned the troubleshooting. Sean does a great troubleshooting UCS class or session. He does a great UCS architecture review session. Louis Wada, someone I know who works at Cisco TAC for the 1000V, does a troubleshooting session for that that is just phenomenal. And so you get a lot of great information, data center architectures, deployments. It's, a, it's well worth your time to do that if you're interested in the data center space. Other conferences are still very good. The VMworld conference from VMware, with all the other integrations, you see things talking about Cisco and storage connectivity and best practices. In fact, the last two VMworlds, I've done the sessions on the Nexus 1000V deployment and troubleshooting. So, you know, a partner's perspective on a Cisco product at a VMware conference. Others for storage are like EMC World and NetApp does one and HP does one. So there's a lot of these conferences. They're not just, you know, 
ways to go meet vendors or something like that, you get really great information that you can put and use every day from those. Check the resources I gave you in the troubleshooting lesson. Great blogs. I gave you several of them. You know, Dave Alexander, Sean McGee's, Jeremy Waldrop's. Mine's fairly decent, I think. You know, that's a great way to learn about new information as it comes out or interesting features or quirky things or we ran into this this week and here's how we got around it. Stuff like that. There's some good UCS books out as well. Uh, if you want to see about the development of UCS, there's one, I think it's out of print now, but I know I see it on Amazon and eBay all the time. It's called Project California, which it was the code name for UCS. That's a good one. There's now a Cisco Press UCS book by the same guys, I believe. There's Nexus books out there, storage for MDS out there. A lot of good material. And then talking about storage, again, I'm EMC focused. So storage is tough to get into no matter no matter which vendor you you got you use or you want to learn but we're starting to see some some things come out that kind of help you be able to do some lab and some work without having to sit next to a you know a $200,000 storage array so for example Nick Weaver at Nickopedia Nick works for EMC he used to be part of what's called the B specialist team now he's in the office of the CTO and Nick uh, took an existing product called the virtual storage appliance the VSA and the EMC's VSA was, at the time, it was their Solera array, and it was basically a virtual appliance that runs in VMware, either a vSphere cluster or VMware Workstation or Fusion on your desktop. And it emulated and ran the same code as EMC's NAS product, the Solera. And it was good. It wasn't great. Uh, it took some work to get it configured properly and to manage. So Nick took it, and he did what he calls Uberized it. So he created the Uber VSA, and the current version is called the Uber VNX because... EMC's current uh, commercial razor called VNX and he's kind of streamlined it made it much more efficient better performance less memory use and easier to configure so now I use these it's like having a full-blown array in a virtual appliance you know I give it some disk on the back end but I can do things like do NFS or SIF shares I can set up replication and do iSCSI I can do all sorts of things so I do entire demos and failover and replication demos using these products so EMC has this one, the Uber ones that I've got you a link to here. Left Hand has a VSA. I believe NetApp is working on getting their VSA out. It's been only available to some users and partners, and they're trying to get that out public. So it's a great way to kind of play around with the interfaces, see how commercial arrays work, and you can start you know, being comfortable with those things and maybe take, being able to take on some more responsibility within your organization. Because as I've said, um, storage skill sets are high demand but it's one of the harder things to get a hold of. So anything that we can do to help, I think it is a big step forward. And then literal next step. So first, once you determine the path you believe, you know, you might want to consider other certifications. And we've talked about, you know, UCS implementation certification, how you have to have your VMware VCP. There's also a UCS design certification. That's the first one I did way back when it was originally released. And to be honest, there's a fair bit of overlap between the two. So if you if you go and you pass implementation certification and exam, you may want to look at design. I believe that, you know, it's like I said, it's been a long time, but I had to do some of the design Cisco uh, prereqs instead of implementation prereqs like you have. So there may be some other Cisco courses you need or exams that you need, but it's probably worth your time to do it, especially because if you're going to play in the data center space, those other design prereqs are actually worth having and worth going through getting the knowledge for. But then you've got others. VMware VCP. Above the VCP you've got VCAP, which are the next levels. There's an administration and a design. EMC has storage certifications. NetApp does the same. HP, Compel it from Dell. I mean, there's a lot of things out there. So kind of look around and see where you want to go and what you want to do. And if you need training, absolutely come back. Hopefully you've enjoyed this course and continue to come back and look at TrainSignal. TrainSignal has some fantastic VMware courses, really good Cisco courses. So if networking is something you want to bolt on and add to your skill set, look at Cisco CCNA and CCNP certifications. They're very well respected in the industry. They've been around a long time. Cisco has maintained the quality of those certifications, which is good because I've been a CCNP for a long time, so I'm happy with that. But, you know, TrainSignal has a ton of great things. We take a lot of pride in our courses, and we want you to enjoy them and come back and continue to expand your skill set. And you'll keep moving forward. Uh, much the same way technology never stands still. 
Cisco UCS evolves very quickly. It's been out a couple years, about two years now, and every iteration, every update, 1.1, 1, 1.2, 1, 1, 3, 4, 2, 0, there's been a lot of enhancements that have come out along the way. And, you know, when 2.0 hit, that was a big release. So it's, it's, you have to kind of stay in front of this. We do it all the time. When 2.0 hits, I go back and look at customers' installations and think, wow, here's some new features. Where have we had to make compromises in the past? Where can we go back and, and look at redeployment? So those are important things to, to look at as products change. And data center tech is racing along. And it's probably the fastest moving sector in networking, maybe you know, maybe so compared to some of the communications, but I think so because we're seeing, you know, 40 gig Ethernet and 100 gig Ethernet, Fabric Path, FCOE, other technologies like overlay transport, virtualization, Lisp for, you know, virtualization tech. And it's just something that's very quickly evolving. And VMware and these dense server consolidation are pushing the envelope of what networking needs to provide to give us this dynamic and flexible work environment, you know. If we want to call it the cloud, that's fine. But there's a lot of things that are having to race behind to kind of firm up infrastructure for these, you know, dynamic services. So that's a big one. And at TrendSignal, we value your opinion, and that's not just a line. I mean, you know, we care very much about what you think and what you want. If you have ideas for other courses or enhancements, absolutely let us know. So tons of ways to reach us. Phone numbers there, feedback at trainsignal.com for email, forums at forums.trainsignal.com. And then there's a lot of social media. So the blog is really great. A lot of good content, videos, interviews, upcoming things there. A Facebook page there with some good pictures and, and conversations. Again, trying to get you into the Twitter you know, world. So Train Signal is absolutely on Twitter. I suggest you follow them on Twitter and Facebook. Uh, the people back at the home office for Train Signal are crazy, crazy people. So, you know, look forward to their Halloween costume contests they do every year and things like that. It's really funny and it lets you kind of get that personal connection with a lot of people if you deal with Train Signal. The main site for trainsignal.com for more information on new training and then the videos on YouTube. So, a lot of good resources are available to you. Don't feel like if you're going to take a certification, you're doing it alone. Use these resources, connect, you know, talk to people. And along with that, I want to hear your feedback. And, and that's, again, not a line. So I've given you my email address. Again, it's jason.nash at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter as the Jason Nash, and that's all one word, and that's not supposed to be anything big like the Jason Nash. It's just that I wanted one with my name in it, and someone already has Jason Nash who never actually logs into their account, but I can't reclaim it back. So I just went around to I found something that I could use. But absolutely, reach out. My blog is jasonnash.com. As I said, I'm going to post more information when the new UCS exams come out or as updates are available. But again, let me know what you think. And absolutely, if you're deploying UCS in your environment, I want to hear about it. I want to hear about what you're doing, why you're doing it. If you've got questions or you hit a problem or you found a solution, I love hearing about that stuff. Again, I'm very passionate about UCS and the whole data center environment. I want to know what you're doing, if you're happy with it, and what you're running into. So with that... I wish you the best of luck, and I thank you very much for sitting through the course. I hope it was beneficial, and I hope to see you soon.